Welcome, collectors and hobby enthusiasts. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 18 of the HO Files. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the World Express Logistics Center, which is a building by Model Power. We'll also be taking a look at a bunch of different trailers by various manufacturers, such as Atlas, Scene Master, and Aethern. And we'll also take a look at a few different civilian vehicles, again, by various different manufacturers, such as Riverpoint Station, Trident, and Rico. So, with the introduction out of the way, let's not waste any more time. First thing we'll take a look at is a pair of forklifts. The first one on the left-hand side of your screen, this actually comes in a figure set by Scenic Accents, which is a Woodland Scenics uh, brand. So this is the forklift with workers set that you can purchase. It comes with not only this forklift worker palette, but also a bunch of different other uh, figure reins that you can put up on your layout. So this guy you can put inside operating the forklift or you can take him out if you want to pose the forklift parked up. Unfortunately, the forks do not raise or lower. They are permanently fixed in the down position, but you can take the load, which is the box, or you could take the pallet itself off of the forks. So that's a nice working feature there. And again, as I mentioned before, you can take the figure out of the cab if you so desire to do that. But overall, it's a very nice representation of a forklift that you would see at a distribution hub facility like this even today. The other forklift, which again is a much bigger forklift, uh, is by Mini Metals, which is a brand by Round 2 under the Classic Metal Works Company. It's a 1950s to 1960s forklift. As you can see, the two are, are way different in terms of size and scale. And this one also comes weathered. You can see the grease and dirt that has been accumulated uh, on this forklift well over you know 60 years of service by now. But again, many hubs and warehouse facilities still use these type of uh, forklift or lift trucks even to this day. Likewise, the functionality is lackluster to say the least. The forks are permanently in the down position. It doesn't raise or lower, but you do get this little box and the pallet as well, which, do, which does slide onto the forks just like that, and you can put the box on it too. It is very inexpensive. I think Mini Metals has this listed for like 10 bucks, might even be less than that, and I know that they go on sale periodically, and I do like the little propane tank that's on the back of it. All right. Let's take a look at some of the trailers that you see in front of you. So this is kind of the outlier to the rest of the trailer. So this is the Atlas 48-foot Pines trailer in extra intermodal livery. Not bad. Um, it is mostly plastic, as you would expect for a lot of these HO scale models. I do like the high-quality pad printing graphics, such as the extra intermodal up here, the DOT striping. You have a fleet number over here and the Pines logo down here. Underneath, you have rubber tires, and the landing gear that comes with this set is unique in that you get two different kinds. So you can install the standard kind if the trailer is by itself, or slightly shorter landing gear if the trailer is hooked up behind a truck. So interesting thinking there. On the back of the trailer, once again, no, it's a little bit blurry. There we go. You have extra intermodal 110 inch door opening and a fleet number and your DOT stripes. It's not uncommon to see, even if this was a purpose built Snyder National facility, it isn't uncommon to see different manufacturers of trailers, different uh, carriers, if you will, at these type facilities. Thus, the reason I have a trailer like this with the rest of them. All right. Next two trailers that you'll see are undeniably the nicest two HO trailers that I have. These are by Athern, and they are the Snyder National 53-foot Duraplate trailer. These are licensed. These are actually Wabash National trailers. Um, no stone has been left unturned in terms of the deco and detailing. This one has the white wheels. You can see the lift point graphics here as well as the DOT striping. There's even a small light here. Once again, your plastic landing gear. And here you even have the warning triangle um, for, or not warning triangle, rather the warning diamond. If you wanted to haul hazardous material, obviously you'd put the, the whatever corresponding hazardous code in the warning label there. Taking a look at the back of the trailer, this is where these really, really shine. 
So you have tons of pad, print, pad printed decaling here, such as caution, this trailer makes wide turns, the Wabash National logo here, the Duraplate logo right there. Here's your fleet number, obviously Snyder National up here. Even the hinges are all detailed and colored in, lights back here as well. So just fantastic job by Aethern there. Same thing over here on this side, and then on the front of the trailer, again, you have Snyder National, some simulated lines here. Again, another danger warning label. Here's your fleet number on the side in the silver right here, which is a little bit difficult to see, but it is there. So just a great job. The other Aethern trailer, this again is the same thing. It's a 53-foot trailer, but this one is just a plate trailer, or the other one's a Duraplate trailer. And this has the, obviously, the lines on the side of the trailer. And it also has gray tires, whereas the other one had white. And of most significance, this has a different fleet number on it and different style mud flaps with the Snyder logo in it. So again, these trailers may be relatively pricey at uh, over $20 a piece. But if you are looking for very, very highly detailed replicas uh, of, of trailers for your warehouses or for your train layout, you can do no wrong with these. Next, this is a two-pack. So both of these come in the same blister pack. This is by Scene Master. I believe the correct pronunciation, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is Stoughton trailers, 53 foot. Again, in the same Schneider National livery. These are slightly more affordable. Uh, at about $30 each for two trailers. So again, you can pay $30 for two trailers or uh, $20 each for a high-end trailer. Uh, I do like the way that this looks because this more, has more of like a cream style or cream colored top to the trailer, which I have seen personally. Again, that looks a little bit more realistic. On the front of this, again, Danger logos and then your plugs, which actually come out of the trailer for where your some of your plugins would go for your lines. Once again, looking at the back, caution, this vehicle makes wide turns and a, a different fleet number. Obviously, nowhere near the amount of decos and decals that the other trailers have. And obviously, you can see here that it appears to me that it doesn't have a licensing uh, graphic on the trailer, whereas the Wabash trailers obviously did. As for the main difference... On the other one that comes in the uh, Walther's Scene Master kit, or Walther's Scene Master set, I should say, the only difference is the fleet number. This one ends in 7-7, just to show you that they are different. This one, I believe, ends in a 7-2, and it does. So you can see this one ends in 7-2, and this one ends in 7-7. Now, what I don't know is if you were to buy, like, five sets of these two packs... I don't know if all 10 trailers would have different fleet numbers. That would be really cool and realistic. Or if it's just the same two fleet numbers. That I don't know. Maybe, again, somebody can confirm that if they've bought 10 of them and put them all on different flat cars. Please let me know in the comments section below. All right, the last truck and trailer we'll take a look at. This set comes together, and it's really the only uh, Schneider truck set that I have that actually comes with a cab and trailer. This is by Trucks and Stuff. The cab is a Kenworth T680 sleeper cab, and obviously the van or the trailer is a 53-footer. Uh, not licensed, once again, so we really don't know what kind of trailer it is specifically. If we take a look at the truck first, um, the most important thing to note is that, at least to me, the color match is significantly off between the truck and the trailer. The truck appears to be a slightly brighter orange than the trailer is. Again, I don't know if that's the same way on the real truck and the real trailer could be. Maybe it's a different, it's an earlier truck and an older trailer or a different paint code. Who knows? Anything's possible. But the fact remains that on the collectible itself, the color match is off. There's no steering, which you really wouldn't expect that on a 187 scale model, so that's I'm not going to dock it for that. But it is interesting that there's very little um, die cast on the set at all. I would have at least expected the cab to be die cast. If the trailer was plastic, that's fine, uh, but it's, it's shocking that there's almost no die cast on this. Uh, for graphics, you have the Kenworth logo on the front of the chrome grill. Obviously, Snyder National, Snyder National on the door, and the roadway graphic looks good. Trailer has your 53-footer. 
fleet number here, DOT striping all the way along. The back is, is about as boring as you're going to get. It just says Schneider National. Actually, it doesn't even say Schneider National. It just says Schneider. And then it has some DOT striping and your lights towards the back. On the other side of the box, again, your running lights and 53-footer. And same thing on your truck. So not bad. And it's nice to actually have a truck to go with all the trailers that are available. I know there's a few different Schneider trucks that are out there. I think there's even a white one as well. If you really want to mix up your fleet, there's a white tractor with uh, Schneider on it. That would certainly be interesting looking. Okay, let's turn our attention to a couple different worker vehicles that I have parked over just as examples. These are three of the newest kind of, I like to call them civilian cars or civilian vehicles I've added for the layout. All three of these were acquired on eBay recently. First one is a Ricoh 2006 Dodge Charger in maroon. I don't know how well this is going to come up on camera, but this color, not only is it a factory color, but it is just amazing uh, in hand. It really looks good under the light as well. So the, the worst part about these Ricoh models and anybody that has one can attest, is just the, you, you know the struggle of unboxing one and getting it out. They're fixed very oddly to a base, and you have to squeeze two pins together simultaneously and then use a pair of tweezers. It's ridiculous. Um, but once you get them out, they're very rewarding models to display, very highly detailed plastic lenses for the, the headlights. Same thing for the taillights. And again, the graphics tampoing is very good. All right. Next up, we have an older model by Trident. This is a late model Chevy Suburban. You do, with any Trident model, you have to put the mirrors on yourself. They come on a spruce that you have to separate and then glue on. So there is the Chevy Suburban. No detailing for headlights, no detailing for taillights. But again, theoretically, with a paint pen and a steady hand and a whole lot of patience, you can do that yourself if it bothers you that much. But again, not a bad-looking old Suburban. Finally, you've seen these plenty of times on the channel, but here's another addition to the River Point Station Collection. This is a white Ford uh, F-250 with an extended bed. Really love these. I'd have a whole lot more in my collection if they weren't uh, as pricey as they are. Tailgate goes down again if you've never seen one of these. Super Duty on the back. Even a little molded in trailer hitch, which is not functional, obviously, but it's molded in just uh, for looks. There you go. All right, let's move all of the stuff out of the way, and we'll take a look at the building to close the video. Uh, as I mentioned while I'm doing this, this is the WEL, or the World Express Logistics Center uh, building by Model Power. You can actually purchase this one of two different ways. You can purchase it like I have in a ready-built form, or you can purchase it as a kit and build it yourself. Really just depends on what you want to do. Obviously, if you purchase it as a kit, it's going to save you, I think, between $10 and $15. If you want to purchase it fully assembled, obviously, it's going to be $10 to $15 more expensive. Here's something cool that comes with it. This is like a little office. The figure is from the forklift figure set that I mentioned earlier. I just put him on here as an example. But you can see it has a staircase leading up to a, a door that says office. Here's some nice windows. And you can really put this anywhere you want. I mean, if you wanted to put it offset here or on the other side or over here, it's designed to kind of be put wherever you want it. All right, taking a look at the main building. One thing I really wish they would have incorporated on this, and it would be a non-issue if I had bought it in kit form, because you can then install and control which bay doors are open and closed, but these are fixed in position. So you can't have a couple open and a couple closed, but they all are individually numbered. On this side, you do have this bay, which is open. On the back side, you have the numbers that go up to bay 19, so obviously that would indicate that there's a total of 19 bays. This side of the building is blank, with the exception of the WEL uh, logo. And again, returning to the front of the building, here's a neat aspect that I really appreciate on this, is that they actually have the trailer bumpers in front of the bays 
which are which actually work. Like you can put a trailer up in front of it, and it will stop the trailer from going any closer. So a pretty neat aspect there. Underneath, you are provided with a couple wires right here. So if you wanted to put this on a table, uh, it it is you know wire accessible, so you can do some lighting inside the building if you wanted to run some lights. But overall, it is a very plain Jane and generic warehouse building. But that being said, you can do a lot with this. It's a great starter kit. Uh, uh, and again, along those same lines, if you just want an example of a modern warehouse distribution facility, you can buy it ready-made, throw it on your layout, you're good to go. It does come with these graphics already made on the building, these stickers already put on the building. But again, uh, I think what I will eventually do is I will either change this to a purpose-built Snyder facility or maybe going down the line, I might turn this into an Amazon uh, warehouse or something like that. And again, all you would have to do is just change the graphics and maybe make your own on a computer or something. So there you go, collectors. That will conclude episode 18 of the HO Files. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know these videos as a whole, uh, gener uh, generally for the most part, are very much enjoyed by you guys. So I always appreciate the support. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you know where to leave them down here in the comment section below. But as always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next review.